Saudi-led efforts to isolate Qatar are intensifying. Several companies, including national carrier Qatar Airways, are expected to make losses this year. But Qatar is fighting back. It's seeking multi-billion dollar compensation claims against the Kingdom, Bahrain, the UAE and Egypt. The committee will receive all claims, sort them and then begin to seek compensation in accordance with the law. Qatar is the world's richest country per capita and has the 14th largest sovereign wealth fund in the world. Last year, it reached $335 billion in global assets, including an $11 billion stake in German carmaker Volkswagen. Together with Glencore, it owns a 19.5% stake in Russian oil giant Rosneft, worth $11 billion. $7 billion stakes over in the UK in Barclays, Shell and Sainsbury's. And in the US, a piece of luxury jeweler Tiffany went for more than $1 billion. With more than $344 billion in reserves, Qatar's central bank governor is optimistic the Gulf nation has enough money to survive the crisis, but converting assets into hard cash is easier said than done. So far, there's little sign that the Saudi-led bloc is letting up on its economic sanctions, but with Qatar assembling a legal arsenal, the crisis in the Middle East could take another costly turn. Adefemi Akinsanya, TRT World. Let's delve into this issue in more detail now with our editor-at-large, Craig Capitas, who is in Paris. Craig, great to have you with us, as always. Uh, tell us a little bit about how this lawsuit that they're bringing about might possibly work. Well, their first port of call will likely be the International Court of Arbitration. But the great thing about the law is they can, uh, they can sue for compensation and or uh, contracts that haven't been met in, in virtually any venue where the transaction might take place. Uh, it's, a it's a pretty smart tactic on Qatar's part. Are there any precedents? Uh, do you think that it can succeed? Yeah, there, there are precedents here, as are, but what Qatar's doing here, they're following the old legal maxim. Uh, hey, Saudi Arabia, you can beat the rap, but you can't beat the ride. We're going to take you to court. We're going to make you spend money. And the uh, press is going to be covering uh, these cases that, that we launch against you. So it's uh, optically, it's really good. And remember, Saudi Arabia is running out of money. Qatar, you know, what's this figure? 340 billion sovereign wealth fund. Listen, I, I would bet a dollar to the proverbial donut that they actually have more than that because the Gulf nations have always lowballed their reserves. So Qatar has more than enough liquid assets to pull this off. Well, you say that, Craig, but I mean, the bulk of that $340 billion is in the sovereign wealth fund, which has. Uh, Femi said in her report is actually invested in some pretty illiquid assets. So liquidating, you know, stakes in like Tiffany's, for example, that could take months, years to come to a conclusion, couldn't it? Well, of course it could. But what did the Qataris do yesterday? They ramped up their natural gas production by 20 percent. That's what I mean by liquid assets. Two very important facts here which are being left out of the global debate. Number one, there's only 318,000 Qatari citizens in the world. Number two, Qatar, Qatar produces natural gas, which is clean energy. The Saudis produce primarily petroleum, which is dirty energy. There will always be a market for natural gas. The market for oil uh, with global warming and the electrification of cars, et cetera, is going to be shrinking. Qatar has close to 348 years worth of natural gas to sell to the world and the world wants to buy it. So from everything you're saying, we could be in for a pretty long haul here. Oh yeah, I think this is, this is going to go on well to the end of the year. I mean, just today, uh, uh, one of uh, U.S. Secretary of State Tillerson's uh, aides at the, at the conference in, in Istanbul said that the, the 13 points of the Saudi coalition are now off the table. They're going to start looking at just one question at a time, one point at a time. But the package is gone. Uh, so the Qataris really 
uh, really are in control here so far. Where they're making their mistake is, is, is with optics. Uh, I mean, just uh, the other day at an airline conference in, in Ireland, for instance, the CEO of Qatar Airlines said, uh, called rival U.S. carriers crap and said that their passengers are served by grandmothers. Now, this caused a fury within the travel industry. So Qatar isn't making any friends. Uh, the people they should have on their side or would like to have on their side, you know, they're, they're biting their nose to spite their face. Craig Peters in Paris, thank you ever so much.